Laughing Stock is a hilarious backstage farce and genuinely affectionate look into the world of the theater, one of my favorite things. When the Playhouse, a rustic New England summer theater, schedules a repertory season of Dracula, Hamlet, and Charlie's Aunt, comic mayhem ensues. Here to share some of the backstage stories are actress Gloria Minnick, who plays Susanna Huntsman and director James Del Priori. Thank you both for joining me on Tech Week. Yeah. You are opening <laughs> this weekend, correct? Next weekend. Oh, next weekend. All right, yeah. well, we're still very close to the curtain, so thank you for taking time out of rehearsal to come and join me on Arts Weekly. Uh, James, the director, tell me about Laughing Stock. Uh, it's not, a, it's not a, a title that I'm familiar with, actually. It's been um, produced in a lot of regional theaters around the United States, and, but this is its Fort Wayne premiere. Um, and as you said, it's set in a summer stock theater, it originally been a barn. The actors are usually hired in from New York and there's a scene where they go to New York and meet a whole assortment of actors uh -huh. um, who want to add to their resume, but in some ways I think also to get out of New York City for the summer. Well, we've both, I've read some uh, history of you, you've spent some time in New York, 14 years in yeah, New York? 15 years. 15 years yeah. in the business? And I never did summer stock. I spent every summer in New York, uh, but I kind of loved it. Yeah, um, well, it's, I, I started my career in summer stock, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing this play because I know <laughs> a lot about the angst of summer stock. Well, and I think a lot of the premise of the show is built around the idea in summer stock where basically, and you probably know this more than I do, you rehearse during the day one show, but then at night you do the show that you had to rehearse the week before. And in Laughing Stock, the artistic director has decided to not do it like that so much as to do Charlie's Aunt on a Friday performance, and then Dracula, to do it in rep repertory. And then Dracula as a Saturday, no, Hamlet as a Saturday matinee, and then Dracula at night. So when you start doing things mm -hmm. like that, props and lines, yes. what, start getting mixed right. up. What play am I in at this time? <laughs> what props do we have? Oh, it sounds like great fun. <laughs> Gloria, you're playing... Um, Susanna, Susanna Huntsman. Susanna Huntsman. Tell yes. me about Susanna. She is um, kind of the black sheep of the show. She's a recent graduate from Yale, and she has these very highbrow, eccentric ideas on what she feels theater is and should be. So she takes all of these cutting edge ideas and she puts them on Charlie's aunt <laughs> and um, <laughs> has a hard time justifying it with the text, but she's very convinced that what she's doing is the absolutely correct way to do it. Well, we have to help the inside story for those for those people who are watching who don't know what our Charlie's aunt is. It's an old, old comedy about a guy who comes into a big house and he has to dress up as the aunt because the young lovers can't meet each other without a, without a chaperone. Mm -hmm. And so the uncle dresses up as the aunt. Uh, there's a musical based on it, but it started out <laughs> as a comedy, Charlie's Aunt, and it comes from, I think, the 1930s. So she's coming to town and she mm -hmm. wants to redo a classic old yes. comedy. She thinks there's a deeper meaning Absolutely. <laughs> within it. And, it. and it's a pretty, it's a very funny show in its own right, but you know, high schools do it a lot, and you know, it's, it's a very traditional farce, but she sees deeper insight in the conflicted images of uh, Charlie's mm -hmm. aunt, and yes. likes to do improvs in rehearsals instead of running lines. Well, you've both been in the theater for a while. Um, talk a little bit, if you would, Gloria, about your origins in theater, because I think that's important for, if you're going to put a show on like this, you've got to have some people in the cast that have been around in the theater a little while to get sort of those jokes and understand how to play them. Yes. Um, well, I graduated from IPFW, did shows throughout college, and um, since I've graduated, I've done a lot of local community productions, mm -hmm. and I've taken workshops with the Royal Shakespeare Company, and um, I work with kids, and I teach drama through Community Arts Academy and at other schools in the area, and so um, James called on me to help um, with the Hamlet section. Um, within the course of this play, we do see sections of Hamlet being performed, except the audience is actually seeing the backstage, mm. what's going on backstage, but you hear actual... The difficult language yes, of Hamlet. Yes, yes. Right. Um, and so I've been able to 
use the, the little experience that I've had and, and help my fellow cast members. Oh, I don't know about little experience. I've seen you on stage <laughs> a lot, and you, Fort Wayne is so lucky to have you in town as an actress. Thank you. Your, the the, the um, variety you bring to the stage, your ability to do comedy and tragedy and drama is incredible. Thank so you. we're really lucky <laughs> to have you in town. And James is lucky to have an actress to oh. go to for that well, sort of thing. I saw Gloria this earlier this fall in Plaza Suite at mm -hmm. Arena, and I, you know, I, I knew I was going to direct this. I'd, I read it a few times, and I was like, I've, she's got to play the part of the director from <laughs> Yale. So um, afterwards, I stayed around, and I felt like I was waiting at the stage door. I said, I'm directing this show called Laughing Stock. Maybe you didn't hear it, but I'd really like for you to read it. i get you a cup. She goes, oh. Oh, I know that show very well. And I was like, how do you know it? <laughs> she had read it and recommended it to Arena to do. Oh. So it's kind of come full circle <laughs> where she found the show, now she's in the show as a director mm -hmm. within the show. Well, that sounds like Arena is a bit of a home for you, Gloria. Yes, I love it there. Um, I do do shows, you know, anywhere, but um, there's something so special about Arena. It's tucked inside this um, small building in the historical West Central neighborhood, and everyone that's a part of Arena is just such a, a wonderful family member. Mm -hmm. You really get a sense of community there, and theater becomes fun, but yet you still get to explore in this safe mm -hmm. environment. We have a photo of it on, on for our viewers to look at. It's a beautiful old building in, in West Central, although I do love the picture we're showing because it looks like perhaps it should be in The Hobbit. <laughs> it's an entrance into The <laughs> Hobbit, but it's True. quite a large building once you get into it, it is. yet it's intimate. Mm -hmm. And it is a dinner theater. James, talk a little bit about that component for Arena Dinner Theater, the, the dinner aspect. What do, what do patrons get when they come to Arena Dinner Theater? They can go online and choose their table. Each table seats eight people. Some people want to come with a small group or even have a, enough friends that they fill the whole table. You select where you want to sit. And then on show nights, the theater opens at 6.30 and there's cocktails. And then people sit down and they have a, a lovely dinner. I, they just started using a, a new caterer. Uh, Gag Lines is catering oh. now for this show. And then at 8 o'clock, you get a full show um, after you finish dessert and you have your coffee. And um, So the meal's over by the time the actors, there's no tomatoes that are going to fly from the table, we hope. Correct. Although <laughs> that would be a good idea to put into the show, maybe. <laughs> I mean, we can it's maybe, a laughing stock. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, cocktails are at 6.30. It has a, quite an active bar, which is always True. good for the theater, especially yes. if you're doing a comedy. We like that. We, we always want, ask. Yes, the <laughs> philosophy is cold in the theater and a lot of alcohol will get them laughing. <laughs> Not too hot. Yes. Good idea. Yeah. Yes. And even if, if people are, are sitting with, I know when my parents come, they, they come together and so there are two seats out of the eight. But by the time they leave, they're telling me stories about the people that they sat with True. and, mm -hmm. you know, and so-and-so. Oh, they knew your, you know, old boss and things like that. So I think it, it, it's more social than when you're just sitting in a, you know, a theater with the rows. And, and I think that adds to the f fun. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And some people I know will buy a whole table. It's a great mm -hmm. event for a corporate event mm -hmm. or for friends out for a birthday party. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great way to take a whole group of people. Well, we actually have two performances that have been, the whole theater has been bought out twice for this show already. So yeah. we were really lucky going into it. Um, so our first weekend's almost sold out. There's just a few seats left, and then there's the two weekends after that. So you mean like a corporation or someone purchased it for mm -hmm. their own mm -hmm. event? Mm -hmm. Oh, what a great mm -hmm. idea. That's mm -hmm. a fantastic idea. Is it a big cast? It is. It's a <laughs> cast of 12. Ooh. So um, we're going to be tightly squeezed into the dressing room. <laughs> Which, and, the yeah. funny thing is it, it's kind of exactly what's happening in within the lines of the play is happening with us. I mean, we end up kind of living together for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard of any tempers flaring 
but I'm sure maybe I haven't heard everything. <laughs> director <laughs> doesn't hear everything. <laughs> uh, director learns how to tune some things out, That's too, right. That's you, right. You, we got a show to do. That's right. <laughs> Who's your team, James? Who do you have helping on scene um, design and that sort of thing? Uh, Dottie Miller is my assistant director, and she's actually who's running rehearsal now. Mm -hmm. And Jim Wasson is doing the lights. And I did, I ran Jim's lighting design at, for To Kill a Mockingbird recently for mm -hmm. St. Francis. And I just love his lighting is so mm -hmm. rich. Um, uh, Dave Thomas and I did the set, and Chris uh, Ori is doing the sound. Well, it sounds like there's a few different set configurations that you have to deal with, though. I mean, it sounds like this, the play moves around. You say there's a backstage of Hamlet, and there might be an onstage of something else. So how did you deal with those challenges? Well, the, um, the Dracula is pretty much presented as if you were sitting in the audience watching it. Um, we have a quick change during the intermission, but we're designing a lot of things that slide in and out really quickly. Um, the Hamlet, it, it took a while to kind of think it through. I'm very visual, mm -hmm. um, and it, when it switches around where we're really seeing backstage, Hamlet, we see the actors performing Hamlet as as if we're looking through the flats behind it, so it ends up being a shadow play mm -hmm. of Hamlet. Mm -hmm. So actually I just got a, one of the plastic swords from <laughs> Amazon.com, which I'm sure will look very authentic um, <laughs> as a shadow. You've inspired me. I think I should do an entire shadow production of Hamlet. Perfect. We need to, <laughs> we need to re, uh, have a rebirth of Hamlet somehow. But I agree. I, I'll warn you, you have to every once in a while look around the, uh, the canvas for the shadow play and, and make See sure they're is. not laughing, <laughs> yeah, saying right, their lines, exactly. you know, these very tragic <laughs> lines and kind of giggling and poking each other a little bit. How do we get information for Laughing Stock at Arena Day? Theater. The contact um, information? Well, Arena Dinner Theater has a website, www.arenatheater.org, www and that's an R E theater. And their phone number is 424 5622. And the show is running January 24th through February 8th. And it's just on the weekends? What days does it? Correct. Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday night, because those are the nights that people really want to go, go out, out and, have, and dinner. have dinner and not be rushed. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think dinner theater on a Thursday evening would sell much. Right. From what I can tell. <laughs> I've often thought maybe they should do like coffee theater. Mm. I, I, what about a Sunday afternoon dessert theater? That's good. That, I think the that's church a good crowd. Idea. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both for joining me on Arts Weekly. Good luck on Laughing Stock. It sounds like a, a great, great fun, and I look forward to seeing it. And I really appreciate the work you do in Fort Wayne. Thank you. A fine actress, and we're lucky to have you. Thank you. And I look <laughs> forward to seeing your first, my first experience with your directing. I look forward to yeah, it very I, much. I look forward, we look forward to having you, too. <laughs> I'm John O'Connell, Dean of the IPFW College of Visual and Performing Arts. Don't miss the next Arts Weekly when we talk about four area art galleries. Joining me will be representatives from Artworks, the Gallery of Fine Arts located in Jefferson Point, the Wassenberg Art Center in Van Wert, Ohio, the Clark Gallery at the Honeywell Center in Wabash, and Crestwood's Frame Shop and Gallery in Roanoke. For up-to-the-minute arts updates, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And be sure to join us live Thursday evenings at 7.30 on PBS 39. Thank you for watching Arts Weekly.